you. The chair recognizes the honorable member for Fox Hill. Thank you, uh, Mr. Speaker. Um, when last we met, I think you would remember that I rose to reserve my position on a point with regard to the remarks made by the member of parliament for East Grand Bahama that appeared aimed at me, and I wanted an opportunity to get a transcript of the remarks. Um, so I now rise on a point of order with regard to three aspects of things which he raised in that, uh, in that statement. I've now had the advantage, of, if I may. Yes. I've Very now well. had the advantage of reading the transcript, and it is clear that he was speaking about me. And in it, he called for an apology because he said that this member and Senator Keith Bell called his behavior in relation to allegations about the abuse of Cuban detainees at our detention center treasonous, in quotes. I wish to reply to that and to another allegation that he made, claiming also that, that, uh, I, was, that I accused him of siding with enemies of the, of the state. He also said that these remarks should not be made in relation to him because he was only asking questions about the issue. And he ended his statement with regard to that by saying that, his apolo that this apology was required from me particularly because the person who was making the allegation against him uh, of what that person did to the Constitution. In sum then, Mr. Speaker, it is clear that the remarks are directed at the member of parliament for Fox Hill. Now, in responding I say this. I went back and read the World Health Report this morning uh, of the life expectancy at birth in the year 1950, which was three years before I was born. And it says that for women, it was 61, and for men, 58. Now that means I passed the age when I was expected to live of some boy born in 1953. And I made up my mind that anything is, that's hurled at me is not going to go unanswered. Anything hurled at me, I'm not, what? Life expectancy. 61 for women, 58 for men. For a child born in 1950. Right, 1950. Today it's raised, I think, to 70 and 76. So, for the record, I have never made any public statement about the member of parliament for East Grand Bahama about this matter or any matter as far as I am aware or can remember. And I certainly never said that his behavior was treasonous, although I've heard it said about the FNM in connection with this matter. But not, that never came out of my mouth. Secondly, what I said about being enemies of the state was rather more circumspect or studied than that bald assertion. And the question, Mr. Speaker, is whether or not my response was in scale or proportionate to the comments directed at me by the side officer. Again, I do not recall, and I assert that I never made any such comments directed at the member of parliament for East Grand Baham. Reasonable people can be a judge in these circumstances. The leader of the opposition, the member of parliament for Kalani, who sups with me from time to time, uh, whom I've known from high school, said, without reference from me, Mr. Speaker, that I should resign from office or be dismissed. Presumably, he had good reasons to say so. He claimed that there was a cover-up by me with regard to the events at the detention center. The party then claimed that they had evidence of a report that had been concluded into the matters at the detention center. The next thing we knew, in the public domain came documents, including photographs, which purported to come from that so-called report. The so-called report was never tested, and its authenticity to this day has not been verified. It appeared to me that the party then put two and two together and made it five, and imputed to me knowledge of the so-called report that appeared in the newspaper. On the basis of this faulty logic and intelligence, they then made the demand of me and the Prime Minister for me to demit office. To call that nonsense is too polite a word, but it will suffice for this forum. Shortly after that, Mr. Speaker, the protesters in Miami were enlivened and started the drumbeat against the Bahamas. What I recall is that there were radio talk shows immediately after that event. One of them 
which hosted the chairman of the FNM. And, the, and, and he spent his time defending his party's decision to say what they said. It was the public who accused them of siding with enemies of the Bahamas. So that characterization, characterization did not come from me originally. What I admit to, Mr. Speaker, is that I adopted their logic, and I have repeatedly asked the question of who, how, and why the FNM appeared to take the position that it appears that they were siding with people who were enemies of the Bahamas. That's what I said, and I stand by that. The Honorable Member and his colleagues did not just ask questions, Mr. Speaker. They went further, and, and they made an allegation which went to the heart of my ability to survive in public life. And so this was a serious matter to me. And I don't want some member to come with some benign characterization after the fact. The final straw, though, as I think the public saw it, was when the FNM statement said, when the pro protest was, protesters in the last of these statements they made were threatening our economic interests, they said they were going to lead a boycott against us. They said they were, that the, the FNM issued a statement saying they were advising the protesters that they should not do it, that they didn't agree with it. The next thing we knew, Mr. Speaker, is that the protesters in Miami announced that they were following the advice of the FNM. That's what I know. Those are the facts as I remember them. And the public again asked the question, how is it that the protesters were now following the advice of the FNM in this matter? Lawyers call it the improbability of coincidence. So, the issue is not with me, MP for Grand Bahama. Shakespeare says, the fault, dear Brutus, is not in our stars, but in ourselves. And I say, member, physician, heal thyself. Reasonable people, therefore, make reasonable conclusions. Finally, Mr. Speaker, with regard to the Constitution and this member, I will not allow anyone to rewrite history by seeking to trivialize what was a serious act of civil disobedience on my part and which in the circumstances was absolutely defensible. I deplore any attempt to do so, and the members invited to revisit the facts of what happened and the attempt by a corrupt judge to disbar me. He was not even a national of my country and was seeking to stop my attempt in my country to speak freely. And one day I'll tell the full story. Until then, I want to make it clear. No apology will be coming from me. You'll see the second coming first. <laughs> Thank you, Honourable Member. Hmm? The, the, the member for East Grand Bahama rises and will, is recognized. The chair recognizes Honourable Member for East Grand Bahama. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. After all, the minister, member for Fox Hill State, stated, I'm not exactly sure uh, whether he was refuting or agreeing to what we said. The fact of the matter is, the member made statements, or let me take that back. Statements were attributed to him in the printed media where he was quoted as saying that the FNM sided with the enemy, words to that effect. And what I stated in here last week is that I found that very offensive. Because while he may not have said the member for East Grand Bahama sided with the enemy, when he said the FNM sided with the enemy, he's talking about all of us. If he wanted to be specific, then he should have been specific. But you cannot go out, either in this House or in the public, and make those kind of general statements, Mr. Speaker. And that was my point. And, you know, uh, just to, just to, to, to uh, put a point on it, I printed some comments that were made by the Honorable Senator. And he says... It's, it, yeah, yeah. Very well. Member for East Grand Bahama. Member for East Grand Bahama, take your seat. No such statement about you. I've never made any statement about you that I can recall whatsoever on any subject. An honorable member would accept that and he could prove it. And a member for East Grand Bahama, Mr. Speaker, state statements alleged by the member, by the senator, not applicable in this place. I will accept that, uh, but I stand by my 
comment that statements were attributed to the member. And as he says, he is an honorable man, man, and I have no reason not to believe that, but I expect him to respect those of us who have a different opinion on matters and who rise in this place to defend this country, to, make, to, to bring to light issues that we think are important that should be in the public domain. And so if he's offended by that, I apologize to him. But he should be big enough also to say that he apologizes for the inference of the statements that he made. And that's not being small or, or, or admitting to anything. That's just saying that the statements I made may have carried the wrong impression. But if he can't accept that, so be it. But I stand by what I said, Mr. Speaker. Very well. Thank you, Honorable Member. We're going we're gonna to put some closure to this now. Member for Fox Hill. Apology. I accept his apology. Good man. I accept your apology. I have nothing further to say. And inferences are matters which are drawn by people who are looking at them. I'm not responsible for people's inferences. Very well. Thank you, Honorable Member. Member for Kalani. Thank you. Mr. Speaker, I and the Free National Party is somewhat dismayed and insulted, but Member is somewhat suggest that we may have um, informed or advised the group in Miami as to what no I mem want. The, the member didn't do that. One and one, one, one and one adds to two, you said. So does six minus four. Six, so does six minus four. The speaker. I'm going to allow you to continue, the and then I'm going to let the member for Fox Hill explain I, his, his, what I he want, said. I want Very well. to remember mm -hmm. that what I was published with technology and the one world today is automatically viewed throughout the world. As he spoke, individuals in Africa or wherever is watching. And therefore, you need not send anything or advise anyone. It's easy for them to repeat what is said. The other matter, Mr. Speaker. The other matter, first of all, I don't want to go down that road in debating about or bringing up about the detention center this particular time. I and my entire party and Bahamians are patriotic, and we will defend this country to the end. We are all patriotic. But, Mr. Speaker, an investigation and a tribunal is going on at this particular time, and this particular time we refuse to enter such argument or discussion so as to change or have some bearing or influence on what is going on. I don't think that should happen. Very well. Member for Fox Hill, you your final word? Yeah, I, I, I accept. You know, I, I didn't start this business about imputing any improper motive. And I only responded to the, imp the, the, the thing that was directed at me. Um, I've gotten an apology from one. Oh, well, I didn't ask for one. I didn't ask for one. The chair recognizes the member for East Grand Bar. The record is clear. If the member believes that I have apologized to him for what I said, he is sadly mistaken. I do not. So, so I, I want him to be, be clear on that. Be clear on that. Very well. He's back, you know. Very well. Anyway, um, s s let them, I suffer them, let them suffer their fate. I thank you, sir. Thank you, honorable member. As many. The chair. Thank you very much, Honorable Member. The Chair would just like to, before we continue the debate, an important matter that has been brought to the attention of the Chair, a matter of privilege, and the Chair will now entertain the Member for East Grand Bahama on a matter of privilege. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, earlier this morning, the Member for Foxville sought to distance himself from certain comments um, that uh, were attributed to him. And as a uh, just to make sure that the record is clear, I just wanted to table a couple of documents um, that, that uh, uh, I came, in, came into my um, contact. And the first one is a, an article that was published on August 26, 2013, in the Nassau Guardian, by, written by Candia Dames. And it goes on about the, uh, it's titled, The Cuban Backlash. And it says, um, uh, let's read the, the, the parts that are relevant to the, to the question. 
Um, it says, Mitchell, and this is in the one, two, three, fourth paragraph, Mitchell accused the opposition of siding with enemies of the Bahamas against the Hamian. Yes. It goes on to say, Mitchell, meanwhile, prayed for the patience of Job as he fired back at Minnis, accusing him and the FNM, or the Free National Movement, of being unpatriotic and unbehamian. And then it goes on, I think it's the same person, it goes on to say, this was followed by a warning from Mr. Mitchell that he will be watching every word and accusation. And if they miss and make one false allegation or innuendo, we will see them in court. That's from the Tandia James article on the 26th of August. On the 27th of August, there was a um, press release from the Bahamas Information Services. Yes. Fred Mitchell statement on press inquiries on Cuban issues. And again, I will, I will just go to the point that supports the, the um, comments that I made. Yes. And it goes, once again, the conduct of the FNM is shameful. I will not be a part of this tomfoolery. In publishing their latest allegations, they show once again that the FNM sides with those who would damage the Bahamas. That's from the 27th. And then there's another one, statement by Fred Mitchell, Minister of Foreign Affairs, responding to Loretta Butler Turner and Hubert Chipman of the FNM. And I'll go right down to one, two, three, the fourth paragraph. The real issue is this. The FNM must answer why it, why it has linked arms with the enemies of the Bahamas against their own country in this matter of the detainees. And then the last one I want to read, Mr. Speaker, is a, an article from the Nassau Guardian again, written um, by Travis Cartwright Carroll on the 28th of August. And it reads, the Minister of Foreign Affairs, Fred Mitchell yesterday, accused the Free National Movement of sabotaging the government's effort to properly address issues stemming from the alleged abuse of detainees at the Carmichael Road Detention Center. And he goes on, I described the actions of the FNM earlier as sickening, Mitchell said in his statement. The continued drumbeat that they are on is yet another instance of sabotaging the ongoing effort to craft a fair, reasonable, and transparent policy around these issues without prejudice to any inquiry and its results. And then another paragraph after it says, I will not be a part of this tomfoolery. In publishing their latest allegations, they show once again that the FNM sides with those who would damage the Bahamas. Mr. Speaker, I table these documents only to show, because I'm not interested in the back and forth, only to show that the comments that I made were in fact substantiated by written reports. And again, I call upon the minister, the member from Fox Hill, to issue an apology for those statements. And if he doesn't, then the Bahamian people will make the judgment on that. Yeah. But I believe that, Mr. Speaker, as I said in my original statement, we are all patriotic Bahamians. We will not be in this place today serving this country taking the risk and taking the abuse that we do if we were not patriotic Bahamians interested in the best interest of this country. And that is the basis for the, yes. the statements that were made. For, we were asking for nothing more than transparency and disclosure. And if that is to be considered as treasonous or, or uh, acting with enemies against the state, then, Mr. Speaker, I don't know. That's a different world than I live in. Because I believe we all have a duty to, to protect this country and to ensure that there is transparency in all of our affairs, yeah. particularly when it comes to government matters. And so, Mr. Speaker, I just table these documents. Thank you very much. Order, order, order that the documents be brought up. The chair recognizes the member for Fox Hill for the response. Mr. Uh, Speaker, uh, nothing that this gentleman 
just read, the honorable member just read, derogates Members? what I answered. I answered some specific allegations that were made by him. The member said that I said he was treasonous. I said I made no such statement. The member said that I said that he was acting with enemies against the state. I said I said no such thing. I said no such thing. And I say again, I said no such thing. No such thing. And the statements stand for themselves. Whether they are accurately quoted, I have no idea. But the statements stand for themselves. I stand by what I said this morning, and that statement was this. I remember, I remember that the last statement they made on this point, the last statement they made on this point was, I, we advised the protesters in Miami, do not boycott the Bahamas. The next morning, the protesters were saying, we follow the advice of the FNM and we will not boycott the Bahamas. That's all I said. That's all I said. All I said. That's all I said. I then said, reasonable people are free to draw their own conclusions. And I rest on that. Very well. The, the matter is hereby tabled. Honorable members, honorable members, we'd rather, chair, rather not a back and forth on this as we've. The chair recognizes the member for East Grand Bahama. Mr. Speaker, there are many things that are said that are in the public, that in the public domain. And once it's released, how people act on it is certainly not our responsibility. We are responsible for what we say. But if people take that and do something else, then how do we take responsibility for that? And so, you know, this is one of the things, and, and I spoke about this earlier, we must be careful what we say, because words do have consequences. And this is, what, this is why I raised this whole issue about this, this whole accusation in the first place. Right? And, and, so, and so the minister is right. The Cuban, the, the Cuban uh, democracy movement did uh, uh, make some statement with respect to taking advice. It's in the public domain. It's fine. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. But to attribute that to, to the government, I think it's a bit of a stretch, Mr. Speaker. Thank, thank you very much. Thank you very much. The chair recognizes the member for Foxville. Yes, sir. I simply said there were two statements. Two statements. One statement said what? The statement said, do not boycott the Bahamas. That's what one statement said. The next morning, the people were in the paper saying, we follow the advice of the FNM. That's what it said. And I didn't say anything other than that. Two statements. Now, people are free to draw their conclusions from that. And that's all I say. That's all I say again.